McDonald's was once the most loved fast food brand in America. They practically invented modern fast food. But times have changed. A lot of people are eating healthier, and there are a lot more fast, casual, and affordable food options out there. So as investors, we have to ask ourselves the question, why does McDonald's still exist? And will they thrive in the future? That's exactly what we're going to find out right now. In 1940, Roy and Maurice McDonald were two brothers living in San Bernardino, California, and they started a restaurant with their name on it. And at first it was a general purpose restaurant, but they gradually rebranded it to become focused on hamburgers. And one day they met a man named Ray Kroc. Ray convinced them to sell the national franchise rights to that restaurant to him because he saw the potential of selling burgers and other items at a low price in a fast food kind of atmosphere, which was really innovative at the time. Ray believed so much in the concept of the McDonald's brand that when he found out the McDonald's brothers went behind his back and sold a franchise rights to some other people up in Cook County, which is the Chicago area, he went and found that franchise owner and paid him five times what he had originally paid for it. That's how much he believed in the idea of McDonald's. Once Ray got going, he started selling around the country to entrepreneurs, convincing them to open up McDonald's restaurants. And what do we do is buy the land and construct the restaurant, let the franchisee operate it, and then he would use rents that he charged to the franchisees in order to pay off the mortgage on the property. Now, eventually he expanded more and more and eventually took the company public. Now, McDonald's had a lot of failed products throughout the years. It wasn't always successful, but they eventually hit on the fact that people loved French fries and burgers more than any other items. So they tended to focus on those food items. They innovated in other ways too. For example, by inventing the drive through in the 1970s. This was huge because it allowed people to save time and not even have to leave their car to get a meal. McDonald's eventually grew into the empire that it is today, with over 40,000 restaurants around the world in 119 countries. I mean, the only brands that are bigger than McDonald's as far as units are Subway, and then the combination of restaurants, KFC, Taco Bell, Pizza Hut, and The Habit that make up Yum! brands. But really, as far as overall brand power for a single brand, McDonald's is number one. The way they make money is primarily through their network of franchisees. 93% of the restaurants are owned and operated independently, while the rest are run by the McDonald's Corporation itself. And as far as revenue, about 50% of the revenue comes from those franchise restaurants. The way that it typically works is that McDonald's has a site selection process. They'll scout out the best place to build a property. And then they'll buy or lease that land, build the building, and then offer the rights to own and operate the restaurant there to someone who applies to become a franchisee. But after that, the franchisee has to pay for a lot of the costs, things like the lighting, the decor, etc. Other than the initial franchise fee, which is tens and tens of thousands of dollars, the franchise owner has to pay a lot of ongoing costs too. For example, they have to pay a royalty fee, which is usually around 4% of sales, an advertising fee of around 4%, and then they have to pay rents. They have to pay rents because McDonald's owns or leases the property on their behalf, and that rent typically is around 11%. Now, because of this partnership with the franchisees, McDonald's, the corporation, doesn't have to put up the same amount of capital as they would if all of the stores were company-owned and operated. So the franchisees, they actually shoulder a lot of the costs, even if it's through the form of financing that they take out from a bank, for example, in order to pay for their property and pay for their restaurant. This has worked out very well for McDonald's over the decades. And in 2021, they had over $23 billion in sales. And it's also important to note that the comparable sales have rebounded really nicely since the pandemic started. So they've been making a lot of headway with the reopenings. So we can see from this data alone that McDonald's is surviving largely because of the rents and royalties that it's being paid. But the story doesn't end there. There's more to it. You see, franchisees are integral to McDonald's success, but it's not always sunshine and roses. 
McDonald's has to actually attract these franchisees in order to own and operate the restaurants. And that can be pretty difficult because in their franchise documents, McDonald's states that the franchisee applicant has to bring at least $100,000 of cash to the table if they want to apply. And they also have to have at least liquid assets of $500,000. And that's just getting started. Opening up a new McDonald's costs a lot, with a total cost hovering somewhere between $460,000 and $2.3 million. Not to mention, between 2019 and 2021, a lot of franchise owners left McDonald's with over 1,700 sales or closures within that three-year period. Now, this isn't all doom and gloom because this could be due to a variety of factors. Valuations were pretty high over these years. And there were also a lot of changes during this time. McDonald's increased the number of inspections in restaurants. They started charging technology fees. There was a massive remodeling program for the new kiosk system that they've implemented. So there have been a lot of changes, and I think that a lot of McDonald's owners just said, you know what, I'm going to retire or I'm going to pursue different business ventures because of this. The thing is, I wouldn't really worry about this because McDonald's has a long history of innovation. And in fact, earlier this year in 2022, McDonald's recently changed their policy for how they choose franchise owners. In the past, they used to give preference to either people who were married to existing franchise owners or the children of franchise owners. And that kind of perpetuated this system of privilege that existed over the decades. But now things should be more equal opportunity. Now it has been said, and the CEO of McDonald's has actually alluded to this, that McDonald's has been responsible for more black and Latino millionaires than any other entity in the history of America. Now that's a pretty big claim and I wasn't able to find any data to actually verify that. But even if it's just partially true, that would indicate that McDonald's actually has been a big window of opportunity for a lot of people. Now, looking at the financials, McDonald's has to be doing something right, because in 2021, they pulled in record cash flows for franchise owners in most of their top markets. And a typical McDonald's location pulls in around $2.7 million in sales every year. And the profits that come off of that vary a lot because of the franchise owner's expertise at running their business. But just to put a rule of thumb on it, it's around $150,000 per year. So McDonald's franchises are still quite profitable, even after accounting for all expenses. So aside from maintaining and growing their relationship with their franchisees, how are they able to make so much money, especially when they have so much competition these days? Well, it's all about the real estate. You don't seem to realize what business you're in. You're not in the burger business. You're in the real estate business. If we look at McDonald's latest financial report from 2021, on their balance sheet, they report over $42 billion of property and equipment. And we can see that they own about 40% of the land that their restaurants are built on and about 70% of the buildings. So really, McDonald's is not just a burger and fries chain. No, it's far more than that. McDonald's is a real estate empire. You see, the burgers and fries, that's just a way to get people in the door. McDonald's has already positioned its real estate, it's positioned its marketing, it offers convenient food at affordable prices to the masses. And that is what they have been doing for decades and they haven't stopped doing it. They've only updated their menu and the way they've been doing it along the way. But at its core, McDonald's is using the power of its real estate and its franchisee network in order to make profits year after year after year. If we look at the stock returns from McDonald's, we can see that this bears out from the investor perspective too. I mean, if you invested in McDonald's stock, say five years ago or 10 years ago or beyond, you would have made a lot of money. I mean, even though McDonald's can't raise prices as quickly as other businesses, I mean, if a Big Mac all of a sudden became $20 overnight, you probably wouldn't buy it, right? But over time, they can gradually increase their prices to keep pace with inflation. And the same goes for the rents that they charge their franchise owners. So you have this system where they can continually raise prices over time by serving cheap food at scale and then use those rents and royalties to create profits for their owners. The stock does look a little expensive right now at around 26 times earnings, but 
If an investor were to purchase the shares today and hold for at least 25 years, I think they would be satisfied with the result. And that's just because McDonald's is so good at using its assets and its franchise network to make profits year after year after year. So McDonald's not only still exists, it's actually thriving. And I would expect it to continue thriving far into the future. Thanks for listening to Stock Stories.